You know, it is always important to know what your mission is, especially in the midst of warfare. I've never been in the military, but I have quite a few friends who are. And one of the things that I've always heard is the importance of staying on mission. If you divert from your mission, you can be in the midst of a battle and not necessarily know the proper strategy for your enemy. And the worst thing you can be is in the midst of a hot battle and not know exactly how to fight, how to strategize, and how to win that fight. One of the wonderful things about being a Christian is we don't just have the opportunity to have relationships with one another. We actually have a mission. And the mission that we have as Christians is described in a way that we can understand. It's described as a fight. It's described as a war. The Bible says things like we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. The Bible says things like going to all the world and preach the gospel. That is the mission of the Christian. And I think even in the midst of these very difficult times with the pandemic and social upheaval and all the other things that are happening, more than ever, Christians have to be committed to our mission. Why? Because the battle is raging whether you are fighting or not. And the challenge that we have as representatives of God here on earth, we are challenged to be God's enforcers of his will and to spread his light, especially in the darkest of times. Today, I want to talk about the importance of a mission strategy. And I want to use something that is pretty familiar to you guys. Hopefully, it will resonate with you. Let's pray. Father, in these few moments that we have, I ask you to speak to us. I ask you, Heavenly Father, to help us to understand our role in the fight. Yes, there is a warfare going on that has nothing to do with the physical. It is spiritual in nature, and it is only combated with spiritual weapons. Lord God, help us to understand the weapons we have. Help us to understand the importance of us getting involved in the fight. And Lord, I pray today you will motivate us with something that might be familiar to many of us. Thank you, Father God, for your word, and thank you for life that teaches us truths if we will reflect on them just a little deeper. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 
we read this morning in Ephesians chapter 6, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, and this is Paul speaking, for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly and make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. How many of you here remember that comic strip, Popeye the Sailor Man? You guys remember that? That was an old comic strip that was developed back in the 20s. And it eventually became a cartoon on television, I believe in the 40s or 50s. I used to love watching Popeye the Sailor Man, especially on a Saturday morning. And you always knew what was going to happen. But it was always fun to watch the story. You know the story. Popeye and his sailor friend, Bluto, they both love olive oil, this very skinny, I guess beautiful lady, and olive oil's baby as well. But somehow, some way, they would always start off pretty cool and then for some reason, Bluto would always try to kidnap olive oil. You know, some of these cartoons don't age very well. <laughs> because I, I guess for our time, that would not be a very good idea <laughs> to put into a cartoon. <laughs> However, some, somehow, some way, Bluto would try to kidnap olive oil or kidnap the baby or something. And Popeye would probably try to stand up and, and get her back, and Bluto would always have the advantage. He was bigger, he was stronger, and usually he would always get the upper hand at first. But then, Popeye would pull out that spinach. <laughs> and when he ate that spinach, you literally, it was funny, you would literally see the spinach going into his body and through his limbs, and all of a sudden, he is empowered in a way that he never was. And of course, he would beat, beat down Bluto, and he would get olive oil, and you know, funnily enough, sometimes Olive wouldn't be necessarily as happy to be saved, but Popeye would always be happy that he saved her and saved the baby. And I guess the moral of the cartoon was eat your spinach, like eat your greens or something at the time, yes. But I was reflecting on that this week because I thought to myself, what an image of the way that we should think about or faith mission. It might not look like it on the surface, but it pretty much is. I mean, think about it. Popeye is pretty typical looking guy. Not too handsome, I think. Kind of a slender guy. I mean, he had those huge forearms, but that was about it. Didn't look like he was very, um, prosperous or very rich, just an average sailor guy. But Bluto, he looked more like the guy who was the sailor. He was strong and he was, he had the beard, he looked crude, he looked like he was able to handle himself. So at first appearance, Popeye was looking very unassuming. He was smaller. Bluto, Bluto was bigger. Also, the demeanor was different. Popeye was, he used to, you couldn't hear him a lot of times. He, he was not very audible, but when he did speak, he was very witty. He's a very smart guy. Whereas Bluto was more of the bully. Very interesting. And then, every time, you know, something happened to olive oil or the baby, his demeanor would change. And I think that this is so important for us today. His response to it, his response to something going wrong with the love of his life. That's what I want to focus on today. First of all, you would always notice, he would hear her screaming. He would hear her screaming. So he was always aware that there 
was a problem because he was aware of where she was. And that's important. We'll elaborate on that later. But when she was in distress, he would get fed up. He would get fed up. He knew he needed to do something. He knew he needed to be her protector. So he would always go after her. Also, when he found himself in difficulty, he would pull out that kind of spinach. Yeah. Significant. And then he would fight hard. After he took that spinach, he would fight hard and make sure that she was safe. It is no different with our sensitivity as people of God. You see, we are in this world, yes, unassuming. In fact, many people look at Christians and see people who are feeble, who don't necessarily look very strong. In fact, many philosophers and people will say that Christians are weak people, weak-minded people, weak-acting people. But yet still, it is our responsibility to be aware, to be aware of those who we love. And who are we called to love? We're called to love the world as God does. We're called to love every human being, every man, woman, boy or girl, black, white, it doesn't matter. We are called to love. Why? Because that's who God loves. And so in the same way that Popeye had awareness of where olive oil was because he loved her, we should be aware of our world. Let me ask you something. When was the last time you were aware of your neighbor and how they're doing? How about the people you walk across the road and see? How about the people you see walking down the road every day? The people you see in traffic, the people you see in the supermarket, the people you see around you everywhere. How do you feel about them? Are you tolerating them? Or do you care? You see, there's a big difference between tolerating people and caring for people. And it will result in your intention towards them. You see, if you care about somebody, you will not allow them to simply go about their day feeling hurt, feeling pain, feeling lonely, feeling distressed. Love won't allow that. Love will make you not just aware, but love will make you respond. And so Popeye teaches us the importance of being aware and the importance of proper response when someone is in distress. And let me say this, my friend, so many people around us today are in deep distress. They, may, they might not be crying out, help, help, as olive oil did, but in their hearts, in their minds, in their lives, they're crying out. Can we get relief economically? Can we get relief physically? Can we get relief spiritually, financially? There's so many hurting people. How does that make us feel about our responsibility, about our lives? Well, it's not just being aware of the problem. There has to come a point where when we understand the need and we understand that our loved ones are in distress, we have to get fed up. We have to get fed up. We have to get to a point where we cannot tolerate that pain, that hurt for our loved ones. Popeye was at severe physical disadvantage, but it didn't matter because he loved olive oil and he loved the baby. He was willing to go fight. And you know why many of us are unwilling to enter into spiritual warfare to, to spread the gospel? It is honestly because we haven't gotten fed up. We're willing every day to see people struggle in pain, in hurt. And the best we do so that we can handle it emotionally is we try and ignore it. We distract ourselves with other things. We make sure that even though they're crying out, we're drowning out their cries with the things that we're responsible for, the things that matter to us. 
But oh my friend, we have to get fed up. We have to get tired, sick and tired of the pain of our loved ones. And we have to do something about it. You might say to yourself, well, I don't have the resources. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Well, oh my friend, the wonderful thing about the mission that God has given us is you don't need the resources. God provides the resources. All he wants is for you to get fed up. You see, the resource is kind of like Popeye pulling out that spinach. You see, the spinach is the resource. I don't think Popeye made the spinach, but Popeye had it and he used it. And that's how things changed. You see, God doesn't expect you to be a big theologian, a big Bible scholar. He doesn't expect you to know all the verses of scripture. I mean, it's always good to learn some, but he doesn't expect you to know it all. All he expects of you is to be willing and to be ready to simply act. He provides his word. He provides his spirit. He provides the grace. He provides the wisdom, the divine wisdom that you need to say the words that need to be said to encourage people, to strengthen people. I can't tell how many times I've sat with people or even just met people on the street and you're talking with people and as I'm talking with them, God is giving me something to say to them, an encouraging word, a thought. And as I obey him and I share it, I see countenances change. I see people's ability and, and thoughts about life change right before my eyes. Not because of my wisdom, not because of my insight, but because of the power of God's word and the power of love and the power of the gospel. You don't know what God is capable of doing until you simply make yourself available and use the tools that he's given you. That's the blessing of the mission. The mission is not up to me. All I have to do is show up and be ready. The mission is done by God as he provides the resources. And just as Popeye ingested that spinach and he received supernatural empowerment, so do we. And those enemies, those things that look bigger than us, those situations that look so much greater than we can deal with, by his enablement, we can deal with them easily. Why? Because he is almighty God. There is no one or nothing more powerful than him. And it is in that vein that we receive victory. Why? Because yes, he empowers us, but he wants us to fight hard. He wants us to try. He wants us to schedule. He wants us to plan. And he wants us to do and not give up. We are soldiers. Soldiers in the army of God. We read today concerning the armor of God and the importance of putting it on. Well, if I am called to be a soldier every day of my life in the service of God's gospel on this earth, how am I preparing myself? How am I putting on the things that God wants me to put on so that I might be effective in this war? That's something we have to think about every moment of every day. Because even when we're not fighting, the war is raging. And so the challenge today is simply this, to take the Popeye mission strategy and apply it to the gospel that God has given us and to be dedicated and committed to honoring God simply by making ourselves available and receiving the resources that he's already provided through his word, through his spirit and through the wisdom that he gives us every day. Sound good? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your word and thank you for these things, you know, the stories like Popeye and, you know, these things in life, they're there and they have lessons for us. 
Lord, help us to evaluate our lives now, to think about the warfare that we're facing, to recognize that our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty through you to the pulling down of all strongholds. And I pray when all is said and done, we will be available and ready to go on the mission field and to share the gospel to people who desperately need it. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. We apply it to our hearts and our lives now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.